Hello, my dear fellows, travelers, friends, and photographers around the world. Welcome to Chrisley Travel Channel. Another week has passed, and in this episode, I'm going to bring you to Central Java Province of Indonesia. And today, it will be a tour of candy, or we also refer to the tour of Tampa. Candy is an Indonesian language which refer to Tampa, Hindu Tampa or Buddhist Tampa. They will call it candy. And first of all, let have some background of this central Java. Now, look at the map here. This is a central Java, and it have a total area of 32,800 square kilometer, with a population of around 36.5 million in the year 2020, and making it the third most populous province in both Java as well as in Indonesia. And uh, Indonesia, interestingly, in the year 2020 census, have also reached a population of 270 million. And of the 30 old million populations, 98% of them are Javanese and left with a very little percentage that belong to Sandis, Sandanis people, right? And, um, and Central Java is also known as a center of Javanese cultures and the city of Surakarta and Yogyakarta are the centers of Javanese royal palace that still stand uh, today, which we are not going to share with today, but in the next week. But what we're going to move you to today is to bring you to visit a few temple sites. One of them is Chandi Barabodo, and the other one is called Chandi Pauzan, and lastly, and Chandi Sewu. And Chandi Sewu is actually located side by side in the Chandi Prambana. Uh, temple complex. We will share with you this Chandi Pramba uh, in the next episode. But in today, we will share with you the Chandi Barabodo, Chandi Prauzan, and Chandi Sewu only. So first, let's look at this uh, very famous temple, Barabodo uh, Temple in central Java. Now, Barabodo uh, Temple is a Mahayana Buddhist temple and located in the Magellan's Regency in central Java and is only 40 kilometers northwest of Yogyakarta city in Indonesia. And it was built on the elevated uh, area or uh, raised platforms and between two volcano, basically is the Mount Merapi as well as Mount Mababu. Now, it's a 9th century uh, temple built in Javanese Buddhist architecture style and combined with traditional Hindu design of Madala. Now, the Hindu design Madala is a kind of spiritual symbol symbolic representations right, of the universe in Hindu and Buddhist regions, religions. Now it's as well as the, it's a fusion of Gupta art that reflect the Indian influences. Now Barabudos is the world largest Buddhist temple and ancient monumental temples consist of nine steps platforms of which the lower six platforms 
are Square in Ship, approximately, and the top three most platform uh, of circular in shape is then topped by a central dome which is basically a monumental stupa which can be seen in this image now right if you count look carefully you can find that uh, the first square platform is widest then you find that there are uh, four uh, intermediate square platform then finally uh, the, on the sixth platform the square platform is also a, a wider one then after that follow with three round platform which can be clearly seen in this image and uh, right at the center is where the center dome and as far as the map is concerned in Barabodo right and you found that the gray area is actually the temple complex and this is uh, uh, at the gray area zone. You found that that is the, the Varabudo temple is the circle that end almost at the center of this map. And you s there's two arrow. One arrow go toward the center circle and one arrow out from the center circle. This is actually the walking direction, the, the flow of the visitor that been governed in this temple site. So just now we have an error view of this Barabudo temple. Now let's look at this, the, the layout of Barabudo uh, floor plan. So you can see that, that the highest three uh, round platforms are surrounded, have been placed with a, a Buddha statue. Now is is actually, uh, I should consider that this entire temple is decorated with uh, 2,672 relief panels and 504 Buddha statue. Now the central dome at the highest point is surrounded by three ring of Buddha statue of a total number of 72 numbers of which the innermost is consists of 16 number, the middle rings is 24 and the outer ring is 32 numbers. That's basically on the highest three topmost circular platform. Now each statue seated inside a perforated stupa, which later on I will share with you in the image, then you can understand better. Now in terms of popularity, now it is ranked together with Bagan in Myanmar and Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Right. So Barabudu uh, temple is Indonesia single most visited tourist attraction and is also a UNESCO World Culture Heritage Site which since 1991 which is about 30 years ago. Now today Barabudo remains a popular site for pilgrimage as well. So let's move on with the uh, image proper and this is of course you can see this sign you know that it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And this is the path that leading to Barabodo uh, Temple. At the far end, you can see there's a, you had a, a raised platform and where you had to climb up the steps and finally you arrive at this Barabodo Temple. Now this is a, using ultra-wide angle lens to capture this uh, temple from left so to help the cover from left to right so it give some form of distortions uh, it makes look distorted because of the ultra wide angle lens so now this is just taken at one corner of this temple site at the lowest platform is a wider most and also the lowest lowest platform there's no nothing it's just basically uh, a platform Right. It's only from the second platform onward, you can find that all those uh, uh, relief panels start appearing and the statues start appearing from level platform level 2 all the way up to level 6. Then on level 7, 8 and 9, the circular platform is where you found the Buddha statue in the perforated stupa. So this is one of the entrance and the only entrance that allowed to enter to this uh, Barabudo temple.
So in this image, you can see that the lowest platform is is bare. You know, uh, things only start get interesting uh, while you are on the second platform. So th there's a lot of uh, uh, pendant relief. And you also notice a lot of uh, Buddha statues that have been enclosed, semi enclosed. A nice centuries uh, Buddhist temple, and uh, now it's the uh, 21st century, so it's about 1200 years old. But this temple is well preserved. So this is one of the uh, square platform where the wider uh, passageway, or corridor, and we found that the, on both sides of this corridor are full of those uh, relief panels. And uh, must uh, have more closer view of these uh, relief panels. The uh, carving is very intricate, and you notice that it's not one full piece of rocks, but uh, it's uh, formed by many pieces of rocks. And the relief panels are not all identical, so uh, you can see from all this image. And this is uh, a gate. A door uh, gateway leading to uh, the platform, and finally, we arrive at the last square platform, or rather, the number six platform, and was fully surrounded by a uh, stupa. Now, the uh, round platform we come to view. You found that there are basically three levels. Of course, the levels are different in height. It's not very great in this uh, round platform. You can see there was uh, the round uh, stupa forming trees circle and closing the center dome. The center dome now, you can come and see the size in it compared to other stupa. And these stupa are perforated, and inside the perforated stupa, there will be seated a Buddha statue to each perforated stupa. And now in this image, you will see that the, the stupa, a perforated stupa on the right was, uh, 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 half of it was exposed. You can see that the statue, a Buddha statue is, can be seen on the image. On the right side of this image. In fact, at this point here, it seems to be a one of the good spot for viewing sunrise as well as sunset. So this is the sit point, uh, uh, one we are leaving, you have to uh, exit from a different gate. 
more Buddha statues in the semi-enclosed space at all sides. And you can see a, a, a stone carvings of an animal of the kind and basically this is actually the water discharge outlets rainwater discharge outlets and you can find these uh, animal statues that uh, at all the entrance point at the stairway area and now we move on to another uh, temple which is not so popular, uh, not many people uh, have visited but I found that this is also another very interesting uh, temple in central Java it's called Candy Blasson Blasson now why I have uh, called it Candy Blasson Law in this image because in this Candy Blasson uh, it's basically a, uh, it's a Blasson complex comprised of two sections and the northern section is called Candy Blasson Law or, or we refer to the north section and then there and there's another one that refer to the southern sections right and of course the southern sections are nothing much to see but let's get a bit facts about this Candy Blasson now it's also a Buddhist temple complex which is located in the Buddhisan village uh, in uh, Bram Brambana district just northwest of the Brahma uh, archaeological site in central Java province it's only uh, 1.5 kilometer uh, east of Kendi Sewu now Kendi Sewu is actually located between a uh, Kendi Brambana uh, temple complex uh, archaeological site so uh, of course today we are not going to visit Candy Brambana but we are only cover this Candy Blauzon and also Candy Sewu. Now uh, this uh, Blauzon Candy Blauzon is actually located on the flat lands unlike Candy Parabodo which is on the elevated ground and even though it's on the flat land is is at an altitude of 140 meter above sea level and it cover a, a area of about 2,000 square meter so uh, Candy Plaza is believed to built also in the 9th century around 825 to 850 AD and by Siri Kahulumnan the daughter of Samaratunga the descendant of Selandra dynasty. Now, a point to note that although the construction period of Candy Plaza is very close to the period when Candy Brambana was built, but the building technique that used was distinctively different from Brambana. Now, the Plaza Temple complex is comprises of two zones. Right, and the northern zone is named the Candy Plaza Law, which I'm sharing with you today. While the southern zone is named Candy Plaza Kidu. Right, these two zones are separated by a road. Of the two zone, of course, Candy Plaza Law is the largest and the most well preserved section. It's also the main attraction of this temple site. Now, Kendi Plaza Law, it consists of two main temples and an open area they are always known as Mandapa. Now, both temples have an entrance as well as a gate and a guardian statue known as Dwarapala. Now, beside the two main temple buildings, the temple complex also house 174 smaller buildings of which right, 116 number of them are stupa and then the remaining 558 number are shrine now many of these buildings are with 
inscriptions. Of course, when we visit there, you find that the most of these smaller buildings are all gone, uh, damaged uh, by the earthquake, but the garments are constantly rebuilt them. So I believe that oh, giving over time, more and more of these uh, smaller buildings will be built up uh, from the remain of the the rivers of the stone, the leftover caused by the earthquakes, they are trying to build them up piece by piece, but it's really take time. So in the main temple building, which you can see in this image now, which is actually what was left behind is only a stone Bohisata, Bohisata statue. You know? Uh, a kind of Buddhist statue, right? It's believed that each main temple, there are two main temples, right? Each originally should house six stone statue and also three bronze Buddha statue. In other words, if everything is intact, they should have 12 stone statue and six bronze Buddha statue. But today, only the stone statue remain, but the bronze Buddha statue have gone missing. So this is some of the right up uh, at the entrance. Now this is the main building, one of the main building, and right in front of that you can see there's a gate. Now a closer view of the gate. So this is again a closer view of the main building, one of the main building. Now in this image, you can see the two main buildings and lay over a rectangular compound. And surrounding the uh, temple building with the shrine and a stupa as well. So this is the main building at the side way. So these are the stupa. These are the shrine. So there are not many of them have been rebuilt. More view of this uh, temple. A closer uh, view of it. Close up of the uh, stone relief. The carving on the uh, wall. And this is the, actually the garden at the entrance. So we are moving on to our third and also the last temple is uh, Kendi Sewu. Now Kendi Sewu, although was actually located very very close to Kendi Prambana. It's actually between the, uh, the, uh, the archaeological site. But uh, when we visit uh, Kendi Brahmana, uh, Prambana, we of course will also visit Kendi Sewu. But why I share with you Kendi Sewu? Because the Kendi Sewu itself is, in, is one of the uh, Buddhist temple in Indonesia as well, compared uh, together with Barabodo as well as. Uh, Candy browser. So I will cover with you today on all the Buddhist temple. And you look at this earlier view of this candy sebu, he will give you a rough idea of the layout of this uh, temple site. And of course the location of this candy sebu is not shown on this map because it's just next to the candy 
from Vana's site. So this is actually the uh, this archaeological site. They call it Taman Vis Visata from Vana, right? Although the name is Brahman mentioned, but you notice that there are few uh, temple site. Uh, of the two, the first one is the Kendi Prambana is the main temple and then at the far end at the north you found that there's another temple and that temple is basically the temple Sewu or Kendi Sewu which is now clearly highlighted in this map. So just now we saw the arrow view and now we see the plan. The plan and show exactly the type of temple building can be found in this temple uh, candy silver. So basically there are three main type of temple building, right? The main one with candy Ido, then followed by the candy apit is eight number of them. And then finally you can see all the tiny tiny square uh, candy per wala, right? So therefore, you see, between the close vicinity of this uh, Kendi Sewu, it is surrounded by four much smaller temples, which actually, uh, namely, the Kendi Lo at the north, Kendi Bubra at the south, Kendi Guana at the east, and Kendi Kulo at the west. Right? So you can see there are four temples right at the center sections. Uh, look like a cross there, right? There are actually four small temples. Now, the Sewo in Javanese, it simply means a thousand. So, in other words, it means a thousand temple, you know. But, I'm not sure why they give the name uh, Sewo. Uh, because, in actual fact, in this temple complex, or this temple site, it house only 249 temples, uh, which consists of the main temple. And then, they have a candy Ido. Uh, which is the, uh, the main temple we I just have mentioned to you. Then you have eight candy apit, and finally you have two hundred forty candy per wara. Now, so beside the, the what you are seeing now is actually the main temple building, and uh, beside the main temple building there are eight dewara para uh, statue. Basically, it's a guardian of the site, you know. A pair each is placed at all the four uh, corners at the north, east, south and west entrance. Now, most of the temple structures were destroyed during the earthquake which took place over the past years. Now, restorations, to my understanding, had never stopped on this archaeological site. And to date, the government of Indonesia have successfully restored uh, the main temple, right? And then uh, they also uh, restore four candy apit out of eight, and also fifteen perwara temple, right? It's still a long way to go, but at least with all the different type of temple all been uh, in place, it will give you an idea that if it's everything are. Uh, as the original undestroyed by earthquakes, you can see how many, how uh, magnificent the site is in this temple uh, compound. And Candy Sewu is also part of the UNESCO World Culture Heritage Site together with Candy Prambana and few other temples in this archaeological site region. So these are the some of the view of those. Uh, Temple Apit, they've been restored, and this is actually the, uh, they mentioned just now, the smaller one, the 15 number per Wara Temple. You can see some of them are still in the midway of constructions, restorations, and this is mentioned, uh, mentioned just now is the, the Guardians, they place a pair each, at all the four entrance points.
This is a temple or pit. This is the main temple building. Some of the uh, stone uh, relief. So today we have just mm, concluded our temple tour and uh, to central Java. And I thank you for staying together with me until these hours. I believe you have been entertained and please uh, help to uh, share and subscribe if you have not done so. At the same time, uh, the thumb up from you is very important to me. Now, in my last episode to Indonesia, we'll be bringing you to the special region of Yogyakarta, which is where the house, the royal families of the Southernate, we're going to visit their palace as well as we also visit another very important uh, UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site, the Shandi. From Bana, which I'm not covered today, and this uh, candy uh, from Bana is actually a Hindu temple, uh, as compared to temple a uh, candy Barabodo, which is actually a Buddhist temple. So I will make it a, a point to share with you in this coming episode next week. So please stay safe and stay strong. I hope you are been entertained. And I will see you again next week. And bye.